I just made a secret door from my bathroom into my laundry room. Keep watching to learn how I did it. This video is sponsored by DAP Products. For the main faces of the door, I used half inch MDF panels that I had ripped down into two foot by eight foot size. Anybody who's done trim carpentry knows that no walls or opening in a house are perfectly square. In order to get the tightest reveal or the smallest gap around the door, my best option was to trace the opening of the doorway onto the MDF panel themselves and basically build the door to the opening instead of just using measurements. To cut down my MDF panel, this would be a perfect job for a track saw. I happen to have one that's great, but my track is not eight feet long. So we're gonna improvise. I'm just gonna use a regular circular saw and make a guide out of a piece of uh, manufactured trim board. So I know it's dead straight, shouldn't have any bows to it. And that way I can just run my circular saw alongside and I will get a straight line. Once I had one MDF panel cut to size, I flipped it over and traced it to use as a template for the second panel. Next, I needed to create an interior frame for the door. I went ahead and laid my back MDF panel down on my work surface, and I've cut all my two by twos to size for my frame, so it's time to start assembling the frame on top of the sheet. I typically reach for Weldwood Original Wood Glue by DAP whenever I'm assembling wood projects. I like it because it's easier to clean up squeeze out than some other types of wood glue, and it sets quickly, so I typically only need to leave my projects in clamps for a couple of hours. I attach the 2x2 frame to itself, as well as the MDF panels, using wood glue and 2.5 inch wood screws. The washer and dryer can get a little noisy at times, especially when you know we're trying to watch TV in our bedroom or something like that. So I want this door to be insulated to try to attenuate some of the sound, make it a little bit more quiet, a little bit more muffled. A good way to do that is by adding some foam insulation to the inside of the door. So I just have some basic foam insulation, the kind that you would put, you know, like um, on the back side of your garage door. Stole it from my pile, cut it down to size, and now I'm going to press it into the cavities. I don't think I'm gonna need any glue. Once I get that other piece of MDF on top, I can seal it up and the foam's not going anywhere. I attached the second MDF panel using countersunk one inch wood screws. I then covered up the holes using premium wood filler by DAP. Since I am doing an inset door and my tolerances around the opening are pretty tight, I'm going to have to chamfer or cut a little 45 degree angle off the edge of the front right corner and the back left corner so it can clear the frame as the door pivots. Fortunately, I shouldn't have to take very much off this front edge, the edge that you're going to be able to see, but I am going to have to chamfer about 3 8 of an inch off of the back left edge. Since I have a fairly straight edge, I think the easiest way is going to be just to tilt the blade of my circular saw to 45 degrees, use an edge guide, and run it along the edge, just knocking off that corner. The hardware that I'm going to use is basically pivot door hardware. I found mine on Amazon for less than 50 bucks. They're pretty simple. Each hinge is basically one plate with a hollow barrel and one plate with a stud that fits inside the barrel that will provide a pivot point. These special hinges are concealed within the side of the door and so you won't be able to see them from either side. Each plate is about 3 16 of an inch thick. So to make sure that I have a smaller gap between the casing and the door, you know, smaller reveal all the way around, I want to inset those plates within my door. So I need to cut what's called a mortise. To do that, I am going to use my little palm router. After routing out the bulk of the mortise, I cleaned up the corners using a hammering chisel. I 
I've already marked out the location where the mirror is going to be centered on the door, and I've also marked out the location for the handle. I need to cut an eighth inch wide, quarter inch deep groove in the face of my door to accommodate that long flat handle that I'm going to have inset. There's lots of different ways to cut a groove like this. Typically, I'd probably use a router, but I actually don't have an eighth inch router bit, so I'm just gonna use a circular saw and make a couple of passes. The circular saw blade is round, so I wouldn't have been able to stop just at my line and get a nice quarter inch deep channel. To ensure that the channel was the same depth the entire way, I needed to extend the groove all the way to the end of the door. It's not a big deal because I'm actually going to be skinning the face of this door with some hardboard. You'll see that in a little bit. But either way, I think I'm going to use some premium wood filler from DAP to fill in this groove just so it's a nice flat surface to apply my hardboard. Before I go any further and start adding all the pretty stuff to the door, I wanna make sure that it is going to fit within the opening. So that means I need to install the hardware. With the plates installed on the top and bottom edge of my door, I need to add the plates to the door opening, to the top and bottom of the jam. With the hardware installed, we decided it was a good idea to hang the door and do a test fit before we moved along any further. The door is installed and it's swinging just fine, but I need to install a catch, something that will hold the door in place when you know it's just supposed to be closed and hanging there. So I picked up this magnetic door catch uh, all I have to do is use a Forstner bit, drill a hole up in the top plate, down in the top of the door, and as long as they're aligned, it should hold the door in place. I used a speed square to transfer markings from the door itself to the inside of the door opening. I drilled holes using a one inch Forstner bit and then attached both pieces of the magnetic catch. For the handle of my door, I want to match the handles that we added to the barn doors in our bathroom. I made those a while ago. They're really simple. They're just a three inch strip of aluminum that I actually covered with a chrome looking vinyl and then we screwed to the edge of the door. So it creates just kind of this vertical little blade handle that you can slide the door with. Kind of like a tab pole if you've ever seen those on cabinetry. I picked up a piece of eighth inch thick, two inch wide aluminum plate at Home Depot. And the nice thing about aluminum is I can cut it using woodworking tools. So I'm just gonna take it over to my miter saw. We noticed while we were hanging the door that uh, the back side gets a little tricky to open. I didn't think about adding a handle to this side which is very needed, especially because it has to be pulled to open. So I picked up a piece of one inch, uh, I would call it angle iron, but I guess it's aluminum angle, right angle. I'm going to route out an edge of the door and create a full length pull. I've got my aluminum handles all cut, the one for the front of the door and the one for the back. The rest of our hardware throughout the house is chrome plated. I want to try to match that. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability or the resources to chrome plate this aluminum. So we're going to come up with a hack that I used on the barn doors in the rest of the bathroom. And I got chrome vinyl, chrome look vinyl. It uh, worked really well on those other doors. So I'm going to use it for this hardware. The door is getting a 3 16 skin on it. You'll see why in a little bit. It's mostly to hold the mirror in place. I figure if I add that same hardboard skin to the wall, not only will it be easier to get the door and the wall flush, but I'll also be able to overcut the gaps around the door just a little bit to make my reveal smaller. So I'm hoping that the skin from the door and the skin from the wall will only be at most an eighth of an inch apart. So I'll just have this thin eighth inch seam around the door, which will be less noticeable than, you know, the sizable gap that I had to have in order for the door to pivot. 
Just like I did with the door itself, I figured the best way to get the exact dimensions for the opening was to put my quarter inch plywood panel up against the door opening and then trace the opening from the back side. I used a circular saw to cut the long straight lines, but then switched to a jigsaw to get into those tight corners. Here is the skin for the face of my door. The mirror is going to go in the center, and what I plan on doing is actually cutting out a center panel from the skin. By cutting out that panel, the mirror can sit flush with the skin, so the whole thing flows. I don't have any sharp edges or anything. To cut out this panel, I'm going to use the same technique I used to cut out the main door skin from the whole outer skin to begin with. I'm gonna use my circular saw and carefully plunge cut into the lines that I've already marked out. Plunge cutting on a circular saw is a little tricky, so I don't recommend it if you're a beginner. Something like this could also be done with a jigsaw. I've also placed a couple of pieces of styrofoam underneath my hardboard. That way I can sink my blade all the way through my material. It'll go past the hardboard about an eighth of an inch and I can make my cuts straight through without worrying about damaging my surface underneath. To attach the quarter inch plywood to the face of the MDF, I used, once again, DAP Weldwood wood glue. I made sure to brush on a healthy amount and then clamp the two panels together while they dried. Paint time. I'm going to start first with a water-based primer just to make sure I seal up all that really thirsty MDF. The biggest benefit of water-based primer is the fact that it dries super, super fast. It's also gonna be compatible with the water-based latex paint that I'm going to use next. The biggest downside of water-based primers is the fact that it causes wood fibers to swell. You can sometimes do it with MDF too if you're a little too wet. So I need to make sure that I apply just a couple really light coats. And I'm also gonna have to come back after my primer's dry and do a light sanding to knock down the grain of the wood before I can follow up with paint. The drywall around the bracket, the top part of the hinge for the door, um, got a little ugly during install. So fortunately, I have a can of Fast Dry Premium Spackle from DAP. This stuff is really cool because it dries so fast, uh, you can fill bigger voids than you normally would be able to with traditional spackle. My door is all painted nice and dry, so that means it is time to add that single straight handle into the groove. To hold the handle in place, I am attaching it using the two-part epoxy that's really easy to use, but it sets up in five minutes, which is good, but I'm gonna have to work fast. Although I had to work quickly, I was able to use a couple of small squares to hold the handle in place while it dried. I'm prepping for the mirror and I'm starting to think about adhesive. In an attempt to keep my door as lightweight as possible, also to have the ability to cut that skinny two and three quarter inch strip on one side of the handle, I decided my best option was to use an acrylic mirror, not glass. If you've ever worked with an acrylic mirror before, you will know if the mirror is not dead flat, I mean completely dead flat, it ends up looking kind of like a funhouse mirror. So instead, I'm going to try experimenting with a product that I have never used before. This is an adhesive tile backing. It's basically a super, super sticky mat that you can use in place of mastic to put things like backsplashes on the wall. I used a rubber tile float to help smooth out the tile adhesive. The best price I could find for the acrylic mirror was to order it online through Home Depot. As you can see, unfortunately, there was some problems with the shipper and, and three out of the four corners were shattered. Luckily, I still had enough material for both mirrors. Okay, the tile adhesive mat is on the door and we are ready to bring in the mirrors. 
I recruited Bryce for an extra pair of hands just because those mirrors are kind of flimsy and I want to make sure that you know they don't over flex and I also want to make sure that everything is aligned well. I made special effort to work out any lumps or air bubbles. Just to give a little bit more security to the mirror and help hold it in place. Also to help seal those raw rough edges, I am going to apply a small bead of caulk in the little seam around the mirror where it meets the MDF. And for the junction between the mirror and the chrome handle, I'm using a special product. I am using DAP Ultra Clear. Not only is it super ultra clear, as the name implies, it also won't yellow and it's very flexible. So it's perfect for an application like this. Once everything was dry, it was time to bring the door back into the house and to get it installed. At this point, I need to attach that hardboard skin that's going to go around the door and make our seam a little less noticeable. To attach the hardboard to the wall, I used the brand new DAP HD Max construction adhesive. It's completely waterproof once it's dry, so it's great in a damp environment like the bathroom. To seal the seam where the hardboard met the wall, I used DAP Alex Ultra sealant. Alex Ultra is ready to paint in just 15 minutes after application, and it also resists mold and mildew growth. Once again, great in a damp bathroom. I brushed on a coat of primer and two coats of paint to blend the panel into the wall. I then attached that aluminum angle handle to the back side of the door. There is one last step and it's what I have been looking forward to do for days. I need to pull off the plastic film and then my door's done. Ready to see the final look? Although the opening isn't completely invisible, the continuous baseboard really helps hide the look of a door. The magnetic catch works way better than I expected. I'm definitely gonna look for projects to incorporate it into in the future. The aluminum angle handle on the back is a little tight. Ideally, it would stick out maybe another quarter of an inch, but it still gives you just enough to grab. If you want to see more of our DIY modern house that we built ourselves, especially the laundry room and bathroom, check out the full Building Modern on a Budget series. And if you like other types of DIY content, check out this video as well. Do you think we're crazy for adding a doorway between our laundry room and bathroom? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching guys.